Hello again. This is Math 2115 coming to you from the College of DuPage. And the title of this lecture is LSA 4 Commentary for Math 2115. Uh, so here is the statement of it. There were three things you're supposed to say what was wrong with this proof. In number two, if the first 10 positive integers are arranged randomly, in a circle, prove that there exist three consecutive such integers whose sum is greater than or equal to 17. And there was an induction proof about Fibonacci numbers, and it told you what F0 was and F1, and it told you the recursion relationship F sub n equals F sub n minus 1 plus F sub n minus 2 for n greater than 1. So we're to use math induction uh, true for all n greater than uh, 1 that this expression holds. That is F sub n is equal to 1 over square root of 5 uh, times in brackets 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the n minus 1 minus root 5 over 2 um, whole to the n. Okay, so let's uh, continue with the, uh, the proof. Uh, the problem with this proof is that you start out with a equal b, and then you're doing a step where you divide by a minus b. And if you divide by a minus b and a equals b, you're dividing by 0. And you can't divide by 0, and uh, as a joke I say, even Chuck Norris cannot divide by 0. So that's the problem you should have found with this proof. Uh, the second problem, uh, you had to be a little bit careful because you were arranging these integers in order uh, along there. So you didn't know which one really comes first. But you know that these represent the integers 1 through 10. But you don't know if the first one that you're putting here is 1 or 10 or something in between. But you know you only use it once. So what we do is we just uh, have an encoding for this. So the place where we start, that's the first integer. I'm using Roman numerals just to distinguish it from what the number really is. So it's 1 through 10. And then uh, what we're doing is we're going to do a proof by contradiction. So here we're going to assume that the sum of any three consecutive going around clockwise without gener uh, loss of generality, you can go around clockwise. Um, so you assume that the sum of any three in a row is not greater than 10. So you see this is the first three, this is the second three, this is the third three, this is the fourth three, and so on and so forth. And so you see what happens, and when you get to the end, what you're doing is you count these three, then you get these two and this one, then you get this one and those two. So you see each of these numbers is counted three times. And if we're saying each of them is less than or equal to 16, we're assuming that this is not true. So that means all are less than, I should say, less than or equal to 16. Uh, that was a typo, but we can just say less than or equal to 16. So that means the most this could add up to was 16, 16, 16, 16. There are 10 of these such triplets, so they could add up to 160. But each triplet, you can see, or each number is happening three times. So that means that the sum of these had to be 3 divided into something that's less than or equal to 160. So that means that the sum of the digits 1 through 10 has to be less than or equal to 53.33333. But we know that the sum from 1 to 10, that's n times n plus 1 over 2. So that is 10 times uh, 11 all by 2, which is 110 divided by 2, which is... 55. So you see we have a contradiction, and so this is a proof by contradiction. So clearly, um, at least one of those has to be bigger than 17. And here's the last one. Uh, we're going to start because we wanted to do it for n bigger than 1. And that means we start with n equal 2. So we're going to show that n equal 2 is true. So what we're doing is we're using n to be 2. We just square that. And we do the calculation. And uh, what happens is you've got to do a little bit of algebra. You're scoring this binomial and this binomial. But when you do the calculation, you get that this is 1. And, um, and, and, and 1 is what f2 is. So it's true when you're at 2. But now we're going to assume that it's true for 2 through capital N. This is the strong form of math induction. So we're assuming that this is true. And what we have to show is that F N plus 1 
has to be this. And notice I have n plus 1 on the exponents. So I'm going to start with f n plus f sub n plus 1, which by my recursion relationship, by the definition of Fibonacci numbers, I know I add the previous two. So this is what f sub n is, and that is by the induction hypothesis. So I have this one plus n minus 1, which is this one. And so you see this is just the definition of the n plus first Fibonacci number. But now I'm going to reorganize this, and I'm going to take this term and group it with this term and this term and group it with this term. And so make sure you understand the algebra. But this line is the same thing as this line. And now I have some common factors. Across these two terms, I do have a common factor of uh, 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the n minus 1. So I can pull that out. And so this uh, piece of this here is 1 over root 5, 1 plus root 5 over 2, whole to the n minus 1. And what's left is this to the first power plus 1. And on this one, I'm going to factor out this, 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 out of this. And then I have 1 over uh, square root of 5, 1 minus uh, root 5 over 2 to the n minus 1 times. Uh, and then this is um, uh, 1 minus root 5 over 2 plus 1. There should be a 1 here, and I, um, I, I paste it over it, but there is a 1 here. And so that works out. And so um, this then is I... Uh, suggest that you note that if you take 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2 squared, you get 3 plus or minus root 5 over 2. And so that, um, that will happen, and we can substitute in that. And notice that I was doing this for 1 plus or minus, and that's 1 plus or minus. So as you see, when we do that, we find that this thing right here is this, and this thing right here with the plus 1, don't forget, is this. So those are the same things. So what we get is what we exactly uh, wanted is that this is, I'm making those substitutions here. And so I get this, this is n um, uh, minus one and I add two, that's properties of exponents. I get n plus one and here I add two again, I get n plus one. Therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, we have shown that this is true. Lots of algebra, make sure that you can follow the algebra. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. May God bless you all.